essayist and producer Sean Pamphilon has a look now at the Williams here and now with an eye toward the Williams family past. There are distinctly different opinions when it comes to the always outspoken and at times controversial Richard Williams. He's eccentric, he's revolutionary, some say anti-Semitic, without a doubt egocentric. When the guy answers the phone, he says, the great one. But there's one thing we all can agree upon. He's made a huge contribution towards his daughter's development into Grand Slam champions. But more importantly, he and his wife, Oracine, have raised multifaceted individuals whose interests extend far beyond the confines of a tennis court. SUV. Good length. You're gonna make it. You're gonna make it. I saw them when they were very young. They hit the ball wonderfully. Yeah, I'm over here, turn. To my mind, and I think to everyone else's, you gotta play tournaments. You've got to yeah. win some tournaments. They proved you didn't have to. Oh, I love this game. If you look at their professional record, they've played far fewer matches than their opponents, and they played hardly any junior tennis at all, and that's unheard of. All I know is that if they never win another tennis match, Papa will have done a great job. I never thought of myself as a complex man or as someone who was really that hard to understand. Put it away, Honor, put it away. Right now, right back in our face. So it would hardly take a genius to realize that I've always been a lot too arrogant, a little too fucking wise. I think that Vic Serena would be the best tennis player, female tennis player ever lived. It was a combination that made a lot of folks feel duty bound to do whatever they could to try and shoot me down. He's much like Muhammad Ali used to be. He told you what was going to happen, and it happened. We hit off some of the things that I might possibly say to see if they couldn't take some of my pride away. The media people, or uh, any other people see what I'm doing, they think there's something crazy with that because this is most unusual. From some of the things that Richard Williams would say, I mean, people just kind of consider him like, a, like an eccentric kind of kook, you know, who didn't really know what he was doing. Yeah. Did he know what he was doing? He didn't know what he was doing. I think that Mr. Williams uh, is, is a man of such conviction that he believed everything he was saying so much that he willed it to be so. It's a wonder, I think, that he knew what he was doing. He didn't have any background in tennis. Don't kill me. He would go out and borrow semi-deflated balls, use balls from country club, fill up a shopping cart, and let the girls hit till the cart was exhausted. Come on. And my dad, he had saw um, someone making a lot of money on TV, and he didn't make that much in a year, so he decided that he's going to have some, yeah. some kids to do Very that. Good. They haven't even reached their potential, which uh, I don't think people realize. They're probably at 75%, and that may be hard for the public to understand because they're so great. But I think the, the reason for that is that Richard didn't let them play that much competition. The only reason that oh, yeah. there is such a hype over yeah. Venus yeah. or Serena <laughs> It's because of the money that could be made with those two girls. Are we rolling or are we talking? I'm gonna talk about the consequence, the consequence of ignorance. Education is very important to them. There's been times when kids didn't practice because they didn't quite do the job in school. I respect that, especially if you have so-called phenoms in your household. I've seen athletes that couldn't even read, and that'll never happen with a Venus and a Serena. The consequence of ignorance, not check it. Dependence and independence. And what did you come up with on that? Well, it was Venus theory. Go ahead. It's the independent partner will make decisions on her own. She will miss shots without consulting her partner. Consulting. She will not consult her partner on where she's serving. She will be independent. The dependent partner will consult her partner, make her shots, and will love her partner in every way. We're dependent partners. We're dependent. Well, that's, that is deep. Everyone has an opportunity, but if they don't have one, just knock it on their door right there, they should make one. There's a lot of things I like to do in my life. These girls have the entire world open to them, and it's all because education was much more important in their development than was tennis. For instance, they're not going to play this fall. They want to go back to the Fashion Institute of Florida and, and do some, uh, take another semester there. It makes them very interesting people, but I wouldn't drift too far away from you know, the main chance. You know, I mean, the life of an athlete is real short, real, real, it's shorter than anybody thinks when they're that young. It's very important for each one of them to be individuals and uh, to develop. They're both fantastic athletes. Either one could be number one in the world. No. Papa always said Venus is going to be great, but Serena is going to be greater. She was happy for little sister, but she always felt that she was the princess in waiting. 
And I think that was a mental jolt to Venus, who had already always taken care of little sister. Don't let me start this. If homies were the hardest. And when Venus won Wimbledon this year, it completely changed her outlook. Uh, the weight of the world was off her shoulders. She hasn't lost a match since. Serena, on the other hand, has lost confidence, I think, since then. And I think it was very painful for her, really, to lose to her sister in the semifinals. The two of you may end up facing each other for the whole ball of wax. Is it difficult to keep that out of your minds when you're at a Grand Slam? If anything, that'd be the best way to go, actually. Both of us in the finals, what we always wanted. And one day, they're going to meet at Wilmington, and they're going to play in the finals. And the next year, they're going to cancel. Uh, a man who literally at age 35 uh, touched the racket for the first time, uh, taught himself by you know, reading books and watching videotape, and then was able to uh, develop his own you know, uh, progeny into being what might become the two best female tennis players of all time. If you think big, you'll be big, OK? I am very big. Had a girl. I stand by my statement, the two most extraordinary players in the history of the game.